Hello students, welcome back to my channel. I am your chemistry mentor, teacher Thaddeus Baluka, the ocean of chemistry. Today we are going to continue with the topic of organic chemistry two. Still the subtopic is alkanoic acids. So work with me as we try to navigate uh, through this is important topic. So work with me as I try to navigate through this important topic of chemistry. So as I've said, the topic of interest today is organic chemistry, is organic chemistry too. And uh, this is alkanoic acid, lesson number two from alkanoic acid. So welcome. So the subtopic, as I've said, is alkanoic acid. We expect to accomplish two, at least two important tasks. And that is now task number one is, we need to be able to look at the physical properties of alkanoic acid. And we also need to look at the chemical, some of the chemical properties of alkanoic acid. So in our previous, in our previous topic, we were dealing with the, the preparation of uh, um, lesson number one, we're dealing with the preparation of alkanoic acid. So lesson number two, we are going to look at the physical properties of alkanoic acid. And we're also going to look at the chemical, some of the chemical properties of alkanoic acid. So work with me as we try to swim through the ocean of chemistry. What are some of the lesson objectives? By the end of the lesson, you, the learner, you, the learner, should be able to explain the physical properties of alkanoic acid and describe some of the chemical properties of alkanoic acid. So let's look at this chart. Looking at this chart, we're looking from methanoic acid all the way to decanoic acid. And looking at that, you can look at the relative molecular mass. The RMM is the relative molecular mass. A uh, formidano is a formidano is acid is 46. Uh, Idano is, is 60. And you have the butanoic all the way to the decanoic 172. So the mass, the molecular mass, the relative molecular mass is increasing with increasing number of carbon atoms. So that means automatically the density will also increase with increasing number of carbon atoms. So automatically methanoic will have a lower density than propanoic because mass is directly proportional to density. With the melting point, you can see there is no particular trade. So we cannot comment about the, the, the melting point, but there is a particular trade for uh, boiling point whereby there is increase in the melting point with the increase in carbon atoms or rather with the increase in molecular mass. So solubility, the first four are very, very soluble, which means they are going to form an homogeneous solution, rather a uniform solution of water. But now uh, from pentanoic, the solubility decreases and they become slightly soluble in water. So I want us to understand what is the rationale. So this chart summarizes everything about um, the about the properties of alkanoic acid. So I want to unpack one by one the properties of ethanoic acid. So looking at that will be of alkanoic acid. Look at that now. The molecular mass will always increase. The, the relative molecular mass is increasing because there is increase in what? There is an increase in the number of carbon atoms and also the number of hydrogen atoms. In fact, from one carbon atom to the next, from one um, uh, from one acid to the next to the next, then the difference is CH2. So you'll find that now uh, from ethanoic to ethanoic, there's a difference between CH2. When you look at CH2, let's look at that. The difference, the difference from one alkanoic acid to the next, each divides by CH. Two, that's the difference between one alkanoic acid to the next. So carbon is 12, as a RAM of 12, relative atomic mass of 12. 
and hydrogen is one. So when you had 12 plus one times two, you end up getting 14. So you'll find that the difference between one alkanoic acid to the next is 14. So 46 plus 14, you get 60. The same with this, the same with this kind of scenario. So it's very much important that it's important to understand that uh, uh, this one should be 74 and not 72. So that when you had 60 plus 14, you get 74, you come to butanoic 74 plus 14, you end up getting um, 88. 88 plus 14, you get 102. 102 plus 14, you get 116. 116 plus 14, you get 130. So you see from one alkanoic acid to the next, there's a difference of, they differ in molecular formula by CH2, but by molecular mass, they differ by 14. So there is increase in relative molecular mass with increase in carbon atom due to increase in number of carbon atoms, which of course has mass. Then you look at now the boiling point. The boiling point is also increasing with increase in number of carbon atoms due to increase in number and also the strength of the Van der Waals forces with the increase in the size of the molecule and also with the increase in molecular mass. So the larger the molecule, the, the more the Van der Waals forces. So some will say the more rather the stronger the Van der Waals forces, but realistically the Van der Waals forces are never strong but they increase, the number of underworlds increases. So that is it. Solubility is also decreasing now. This one is not increasing, it is decreasing with the increase in the size of the molecule. These are alkanoic acid and molecular compounds. And the larger the molecule, the more it becomes molecular. And therefore, molecular compounds are insoluble in water. So there is decrease in polarity, there is decrease in polarity, uh, of the molecules with increase the size of the molecule. The larger the molecule, the less polar that molecule is. The smaller the molecule, the more polar that molecule becomes because uh, smaller molecules have fewer Van der Waals forces, while larger molecules have more Van der Waals forces, and that decreases polarity. Now, in that kind of a scenario, we also have to note that, um, that I want to explain the rationale. Why that now there is no particular trend? There is no particular trend in the melting point, uh, but there is a particular trend in the boiling point. So this, this scenario that what, during melting, that is fusion, when a compound is, is being is melting, we, we during melting, uh, the process of melting, converting a solid to liquid, the bonds are weakened. But when a liquid is being converted to gas, that is during boiling, that is vaporization, bonds are broken. So if you want to know the strength of a bond, it is better understood when you are now breaking the bond, not when you are simply weakening it. So you can't use that. Fundamentally and pragmatically, you can't use the boiling point to determine the strength of a bond. But the best way to determine the strength of a bond is through the boiling point, because that is when the bond is being broken. So that's it. So that is why the, the trade for the boiling point is very clear, but the trade for the melting point is not created. In fact, it is amorphous, it is a puzzle. There's no particular trade for that, because it is, you can see this one is the, 8.6, then it increases, then it decreases, then it increases again, then decreases again, you know, those kind of scenarios because the bonds are not being broken, but rather they are being weakened. That's it. So the best way to know the strength of a bond is through the boiling point whereby the bonds are being broken, but not the melting point. Capture that very clearly. So now let's look at now, I've explained that. Let's look at now the explanation. You can screenshot from there. So the trade in boiling point. The boiling point includes the increase in molecular mass. The number, rather the strength of underwater forces increase and the strength of increase with increase in the strength of intermolecular forces. So we are talking about now, there is increase the, with the, where there is increase in the number, rather the strength of underwater forces with the size of the molecule. So the boiling point of alkanoic acid, another point, we have said that now, there are two points that you need to capture here. First of all, 
the boiling point is increased with increase the molecular mass due to increase in number of underwater forces. Number two, the boiling point of alkanoic acid is higher than that of hydrocarbons. That's the alkanes, alkanes and alkynes with corresponding molecular mass. And what is the rationale here? This is because again, just like alkanoid, like just like alkanoids, the alkanoic acid have both hydrogen bonding and van der Waals forces, while hydrocarbons like alkanes, alkanes and alkynes have only the van der Waals forces. And remember, you don't talk about hydrogen bonds. You talk about hydrogen bonding. We are talking about hydrogen bonding, not hydrogen bonds. So the reason why we don't talk about hydrogen bond is because hydrogen bonding is not a chemical bond. Rather, it is an intermolecular force of attraction. So when you talk about hydrogen bond, it means a hydrogen bond is a type of a chemical bond. Remember the major two types of, the major types of chemical bonding that we have the, the covalent bonding. We have the covalent bond, we have the metallic bond, and we have the ionic bond. But hydrogen is not a bond. It is, a, it is an intermolecular force of attraction. And that is why we talk about hydrogen bonding and not hydrogen bonds. So get that one right. So alkanoic acid have a relatively higher melting point than the corresponding alkanoids with the same molecular mass because alkanoic acid, they form a dimer molecule. Therefore, they have more hydrogen bonding than alkanoids. So the more the key word, which is though it, the, the must is captured, is this is the most one, the most suitable term to use. Talk about they have more hydrogen bonding because they form a dimer molecule. You know, this dimer molecule means that each molecule of alkanoic acid will likely go to be made up of two molecules, while alkanoid is made up of one. So for every molecule of alkanoid, there'll be one hydrogen bond. But for every molecule of alkanoic acid, there'll be two hydrogen bonding. So alkanoic acid, they have more hydrogen bonding than alkanol. And therefore, it has, they have a higher boiling point than alkanols. Solubility. Alkanoic acids are soluble in water because they contain the hydrogen bonding. Remember, all compounds with hydrogen bonding, they are soluble in water. <clears throat> the case of sugar, that's why sugar is a molecular compound, but it is soluble in water because it has the hydrogen bonding. The same with alkanol, the same with glucose. But remember, these are molecular compounds, but it's soluble in water because it contains the hydrogen bonding. So that's why you find alkanols and alkanoic acid, they, have, they are soluble in water because the hydrogen bonding makes it a little bit polar. So soluble in water, but solubility decreases with increase the molecular mass because of decrease in polarity. So the higher the molecular mass, the lower the polarity. Chemical properties. Let's look at some of the chemical properties of alkanoic acid. Remember, alka uh, the alkanoic acids are just like the other acids, although they are normally weak acid. Like normally, the one that you're talking about, the ethanoic, the propanoic. So most of the 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 the, alkan the straight chain alkanoic acid which are monocarboxylic, they are usually weak, but not all organic acids are weak acid per se. So because they contain the hydrogen ions, they react in a similar way, just like the other mineral acids. Like for instance, reaction with metal. We know and met an acid plus a metal, you get sword plus hydrogen gas. So in that kind of a scenario, in that kind of a scenario, it's still the same that wherever you're going to have the, wherever you're going to have the, an acid plus a metal, you get a metal alkanoid, which is salt plus hydrogen gas. So you're still going to be getting acid plus a metal, salt plus hydrogen gas. So the reaction must be accompanied by evaporation. But the, uh, the, the, the salt is, a, is an organic salt, is an organic salt. Therefore, if now you have, the sodium plus propanoic, you get sodium propanoid plus hydrogen gas. If you are using magnesium plus ethanoic, you get magnesium ethanoid plus hydrogen gas. Remember, sodium has a valence of one. So the formula will be like that because the alkanoid has a valence of one. 
But now when you're using magnesium, which has a valence of two, this is how you write the formula of magnesium methanoate. If you are using methanoic, you're going to get methanoate. If you are using pentanoic, you're going to get pentanoate. So this reaction is accompanied by evaporation of a gas that extinguishes the burning strength with a profound. And that is the test. That is a test for acidity. When we're dealing with the test for acidity in particles, the, remember hydrogen, it extinguishes the burning strength with a pop sound, but does not burn with a pop sound. So you can be asked, state the observation meant when magnesium is added to uh, ethanoic acid in a beaker, then you're going to say there are bubbles of a gas. You can be told, and uh, how do you test for the gas? It is to extinguishes a burning splint with a pop sound. Very important. Our chemical properties of alkanoic acid. Reaction with the as basis, that is reaction is simply a neutralization. An acid react with, with a base to form salt plus water, just like the organic acid. So the only, the only difference here is that now, the, 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 the salt is still an organic salt. So if you are using sodium propanoid, you're going to, you're going, if you are using propanoic acid, you're going to plus sodium hydroxide, you're going to get sodium propanoid plus water. So it's just going to be the same like the way it reacts with, an, with, uh, with, a, with a metal, only that now the product here, we are going to have water. But the name of the soil remains the same, depending on the base used. So if you use methanoic plus potassium hydroxide, you're going to get potassium methanoid plus water. So that is how you'll be able to get the name. If you are using methanoic plus sodium hydroxide, you're going to get sodium methanoid. If you are using decanoic, you're going to use sodium to get sodium decanoid plus water. It is as simple as that. And this reaction is called neutralization. So um, the, we have looked at the, the physical properties of, um, of alkanoic acid. And we have looked, uh, looked at the boiling point. There are three components. There are three components of the uh, boiling point. First of all, why does the boiling point increase uh, with increased carbon atoms due to increase in the size of molecule, due to, due to increase in the, in the what? In the number of uh, Van der Waals forces with increase in the size of the molecule. We have also said alkanoic acid have a higher boiling point than the corresponding hydrocarbons, the same molecular mass, because hydrocarbons. They are both Van der Waals and hydrogen bonding. No, no, not the, the, alka, the alkanoic acid are both Van der Waals forces and hydrogen bonding. But the hydrocarbons, they only have the weak Van der Waals forces. That is point number two. Point number three is that uh, we have also looked at now alkano, uh, alkanoic acid, they have a higher boiling point than alkanos because alkanoic acid, they form dimer molecule, and therefore they have more hydrogen bonding than alkanos. We have also said that we cannot use the, the melting point to determine the strength of a bond because during melting, bonds are just weakened, but during boiling, bonds are broken. So that is the reason why we normally use um, the, the boiling point. I remember another common mistake is that when students are answering this question, they tell us that the boiling point is increasing down the group. For heaven's sake, that is a very serious blunder. It is suicidal to talk about the melting point, the boiling point is increasing down the group. There is no group here. We are talking about organic compound. This is an homologous theory, not a chemical family. So, in periodic table, when we talk about the halogens, the, the alkaline metals, the alkaline ants, that is what to talk about down the group. It's not a periodic table. So here we talk about the boiling point increase with the increase in the size of the molecule due to increase in the number of Van der Waals forces, or rather due to increase the number of Van der Waals forces with the size of the molecule. Very important. And we have come to the end of our beautiful lesson today. Keep 
uh, following, keep subscribing, uh, like, comment, and ask any question, any clarification from the comment section. You have been with me, your chemistry mentor, the ocean of chemistry teacher that is Baluka. You can be able to get more of my knowledge from the Octopans. That is the new book that is there for revision for form four recommended for form four. And we also have the Octopus note and workbook whereby you're going to find the most detailed notes. Thank you.